Hey there, Shadi Bazzi here, and welcome to another episode of the Top Listing Agent Show. This week, I'm going to be sharing with you uh, another book review. But before we do that, hey, let me ask you have you already downloaded the new book, ebook I released about a week ago called The Top Listing Agent Black Book? How to Master the Art and Science of Real Estate Influence. It's 100% free. Make sure you get your copy. I want you to review it. I want you to go through it, learn the best ways to generate leads, learn the best way to convert the leads into signed contracts, all included in the ebook. And you can grab your copy at tlablackbook.com. Again, that's tlablackbook.com. Now, the book I'm going to review with you today, uh, this one I'm super pumped about sharing with you. Uh, it's a very small book that I bought, mm, I'd say about a year ago, and it is one of the very few books that I buy that I do not read right away. I think the reason I did not re you know, read into it um, you know, right away because of the size of the book. You see, sometimes in life we judge things, and this is what I did. I thought to myself, it is a small book, therefore it might not have the big ideas or strategies that I need right now in that moment, so I will get to it later. Boy, was that a mistake, because this small book spoke to me big time. Yes, a lot of what is shared in it uh, you know, may not be new to me, uh, but it had all these little reminders that I needed for me and some that I want to pass on to you as your mentor. Uh, the book is how Successful People Grow by John Maxwell, the famous author on everything leadership related. I think it would be safe for me to say this. Any book you read by John Maxwell is going to be a great book, whether it's a small book or a big book. Now, let me remind you again that each book review has three objectives. Objective number one, for me to share with you whether you should invest your time and money on the book. Two, to extract some inspiration from the book to share with you. And three, to extract one exercise to share with you. Okay, let's begin. The book has 139 small pages and 15 chapters in all. You know, if you do the math, each chapter is less than 10 pages long on average. The only thing that I did not like about the book was that the letters are a bit small, which made it a bit hard for me to make out what I was reading, but I got through it. The author hooks you uh, from the get-go. As he titled the introduction of the book, Growth is the Pathway to Your Potential. Let me repeat that one more time. Growth is the pathway to your potential. He goes on to say, and I'm quoting him word for word here, that potential is one of the most wonderful words in any language. I agree 100% with that. Think about it. How many times has someone used that word on you? Someone telling you that they see potential in you and or you see potential in them or within yourself, you recognize the potential in you. He goes on to say that potential looks forward with optimism. It is filled with hope. It promises success. It implies fulfillment. It hints at greatness. Potential is a word based on possibilities. Think about your potential as a human being and you get excited, right? Of course you do. Now, do you have personal potential? Absolutely. Your personal potential is what you could be the person you become. And since you are listening to this podcast, I believe you also have the desire to reach your potential. So now the question becomes, how do you do it? John says the answer is growth. And I know you have heard me say the following a few times. If you want to go for it, you have to grow for it. As a matter of fact, I am going to keep on bouncing what he is referencing in this book to what I have shared with you on this podcast show to illustrate a big point at the end of this episode. In chapter one, the author shares the following statement that I wanted to, to um, relate to you and here's what it is. If you focus on goals, you may hit goals, but that doesn't guarantee growth. If you focus on growth, you will grow and always hit goals. Get it? Do you understand what I just said? Be careful what you focus on. He says that it is more important to focus on growth than it is to focus on hitting a very specific goal. Now, I know what you may be thinking. Well, isn't growth in itself a goal? 
My answer is no. It is a duty to oneself to continue to grow. Anyone who's committed to grow is going to encounter some growth traps. And John shares eight of them with us. And there are three that stuck out for me in reference to my conversation with real estate agents when I first meet them and they are. So here's what, I, what we're trying to say. Anytime you make a commitment to want to grow, um, at the beginning of growth or on the path to growth, you're going to encounter some gaps. You're going to encounter some traps. You're going to encounter some setbacks. And here's what they look like. From the get-go, the timing gap. You know, this is where you start thinking it's not the right time to begin. Come on now. You know what I'm talking about. You have said this a ton of times. And better yet, how many times a buyer or a seller says that to you? You got to give that up. Anytime you see something that you can do or buy or experience or invest in that you know is going to cause you to grow, you got to go for it right away. Kill this excuse of time. And if you recall a few episodes a few episodes ago, I said to you, become like the kind of client you want to attract. Aha. Uh -huh. Got it? I hope you do. The second uh, you know, gap he calls the mistake gap. This is where you're thinking, I'm afraid of making a mistake. In the words of a real estate agent, it sounds like this. What if they ask me a question that I don't know the answer to? Or what if they give me an objection that I do not know how to handle? Okay, enough. I think you get the point. And the third gap, the third trap is the perfection gap. This is where I have to find the best way before I start. In, other, in the words of a real estate agent, it sounds like this. I have to find the best script, the best objection handler, the best business card, the best open house sign, the best dialer, the best listing presentation, the best coach, etc. I get it. I have been there myself and here's my advice to you. These three gaps are killing your business and your potential. Again, I remind you, we live in a very magnetic world of like attracts like. Become the kind of person you want to work with. I also believe that most people have these gaps because they have secret fears. But here is the good news. We also have faith. So the question you have to ask yourself when you are faced with fear is this. Which emotion am I going to allow to be stronger? Fear or faith? And the answer to this question is very important because the stronger emotion is going to be the one that wins. This means that it is time to begin to feed your faith and starve your fears. This also means that you must know yourself in order for you to grow. So Gary Vaynerchuk talks about this a lot and he calls it self-awareness. And there's an entire chapter just on this topic inside of this book. John says that there are three kinds of people when it comes to having direction in life. People who don't know what they would like to do. People who know what they would like to do but don't do it. People who know what they would like to do and do it. Which of these three are you? I say it don't matter which one you have been. What matters is which one you are going to choose to be right now. I want you to be one of the very few who know what they would like to do and actually does it. Easier said than done, right? Right. Yes, I know. Uh, I know that. And most people do not follow through on anything, not only because they have a fear, but because they don't have belief. They don't believe in themselves. John says, you must see value in yourself to add value to yourself. Let me repeat that one more time uh, so it could sink in your head. You must see value in yourself to add value to yourself. You get it now? He is talking about self-confidence and self-esteem of which most people do not have it. If you do not realize that you have genuine value and that you are worth investing in, then you will never put in the time and the effort needed to grow to your potential. A great example would be an agent, a real estate agent, who knows that they need to learn how to prospect, how to pick up the phone and look for new seller leads. They identify a mentor like me who can help them, who can help them kill it on the phones and take a new listing at least once a week, every week, and they see that I have helped others do that. But 
they don't have belief in themselves. Therefore, they talk themselves out of making the investment in the program. When in essence, they are not really investing in the program, they are investing in themselves, investing in their self-growth, investing in their dreams and their vision. Look, you must level up your beliefs to level up your life. Self-esteem is the single most significant key to a person's behavior. Low self-esteem puts a ceiling on your potential. The value we place on ourselves is usually the value others place on us. Think about that one one more time. The value we place on ourselves is usually the value others place on us. And you wonder why so many people do not want to work with you. I get this point so much because a very long time ago, I saw no value in me. And of course, people can pick up on the energy. And once I committed to my personal growth and I started to grow and I started to see me as the most valuable asset to anyone, everyone else saw it. And just like that, just like magic, a new, better me, a new, powerful version of me was born. And here I am hosting a podcast versus listening to one. Although I do listen to a lot of podcasts, by the way, and I'm so happy you are listening to mine right now when you can be listening to someone else. I so appreciate you. So now to me, objective three of the book. I will share with you an exercise to build your self-image. Number one, guard your self-talk. Guard your self-talk. Yep, I know you heard me tell you this before, and the author says that whether you know it or not, there's a conversation going on in your head all the time. This conversation is either an encouraging one, inspiring one, or one that beats the crap out of you all the time. So watch your self-talk. Number two, stop comparing yourself to others. I talked about this in a previous podcast where I said, hey, stop looking to the right and stop looking to the left. And what I meant by looking to the right and left is looking to the person to the right of you and the person to the left of you and trying to compare yourself to them. You need to only look backwards to extract the lessons you've learned and forwards to keep on moving towards your vision. Number three, move beyond your limiting beliefs. Number four, add value to others. Imagine this, the more value you add to others, an example would be to the people inside of your database, your past clients, your centers of influence, your community, the more valuable you become, the more business opportunities you will attract. Number five, do the right thing even if it's the hard thing. And look, sometimes in most cases, the right thing is the hard thing. Number six, practice a small discipline daily in a specific area of your life. Number seven, celebrate small victories. And guys, this is so huge. Like, you know, we take a look at, you know, a goal of, for example, you know, taking 25 listings in a year. And we keep our eye on that 25 listings that we almost never ever celebrate unless we hit the 25 listings at the end of the year. You know, every time you take a new listing, that's a small victory, you know, on the journey towards achieving that goal of 25. You need to stop and celebrate that as a victory so you can get excited about the next victory and the next listing you take, etc. Number eight, embrace a positive vision for your life based on what you value. Embrace a positive vision for your life based on what you value. We talked about creating a vision. We just did an episode a few weeks ago on having a 2020 vision for 2020. Go back and listen to that episode. Come up with your vision. Embrace that vision. Read that vision every single day and bring that vision to life. Number nine. Number nine is practice one word, the one word strategy. This is awesome. I mean, think of it this way. If you pick just one word to describe yourself, what would it be? Would it be powerful? Would it be courageous? What would that one word be? Pick a word and begin to live your life as if you are the perfect example of that word. And number 10, take responsibility for your life. Don't blame your wife. Don't blame your significant other. Don't blame your husband. Don't blame your children. Don't blame your community. Don't blame your broker. Don't blame don't blame your associates. Don't, don't blame the agent on the other end of the transaction. Don't blame your, your lender. Don't blame the title company. Don't blame anyone. Take responsibility for everything. Now, once you do what I have shared with you thus far, seek out a positive environment. You know, on page 53 of the book, John shares with you a specific, easy-to-follow, step-by-step process to do this. 
hopefully you pick up the book go to page 53 and then turn your environment upside down and make it so much better for you i have also told you a million times that you are a product of your environment here are some more inspiring thoughts from the book are as follows one Designing your life is more important than designing your career. This is something I've been talking about this whole entire year. It seems like the whole entire team has been, hey, you know, your career is the vehicle to get you to the end goal, but you are the driver of that vehicle and it's critically important to work more on you than you do on your business because the more that you grow, the more that your business will grow, the more that your bank account will grow, etc. Number two. You have to give up in order to grow up. Letting go of what you love for what you value. An example would be giving up financial security today for potential tomorrow. Immediate gratification. Giving up immediate gratification for personal growth. Giving up addition for multiplication. Number three, learn to ask more questions. Become a student. Number four, find a mentor. Number four, find a mentor. And I'm going to read you from page 115 inside the book. The chapter is called Find a Mentor. It's hard to improve when you have no one but yourself to follow. The author says, I have learned a lot from people I've never met. Dale Carnegie taught me people skills when I read How to Win Friends and Influence People in Junior High School. James Allen helped me understand that my attitude and the way that I thought would impact the course of my life what I read as a man thinketh. And Oswald, Oswald Sanders revealed the importance of leadership to me for the first time when I read his book, Spiritual Leadership. Most people who decide to grow personally find their first mentors in the pages of books. Did you hear that? In the pages of books. That's why I've been bringing you book reviews, trying to get you to take on the habit of reading because I want to help you and that's why I wrote the Top Listing Agent Black Book so you could read that and I took out all the huff, I took off all the fluff, I took out all the stories and I just gave you tactical strategies on how to generate seller leads every single day and convert those leads into appointments and then go on the appointments and turn them into signed listing agreements. Everything you need is in there and you can download it at TLA blackbook.com number five he said help others reach their potential my friends there you have it not to brag or anything like that in the past episodes i have shared with you a lot of what is shared with you in this book however i am so happy that this is happening as it serves that you are in the right place and you have selected a podcast to listen to that is revealing to you not only how to grow your business but to also keep on growing as a human being. That is my commitment to you, to do whatever it takes to help you become the best version of yourself. And as I shared with you earlier, that the author has learned most of what he has learned from people he never met in person. These are the people he met in a book. With that said, have you read my little mini book, The Top Listing Agent Black Book? If yes, thank you. And if not, go get it now at tlablackbook.com. It's free and it comes with bonus training videos on how to create a mindset of a champion, master lead generation, and lead conversion. The entire book is all about how you can become a top listing agent. So go get your copy now at tlablackbook.com. Talk to you soon. Talk to you soon. Talk to you soon.